Definitely not going to explain the solo, but just for the sake of that video, let's give that a go. My name is Guillaume and I hope you're doing fantastic today. Welcome to this new episode of Hit The Tone on Torment's Guitars and Basses. If you're not familiar with the series, I'm taking bits of songs, famous licks and riffs and try to give you all the tools you need to hit the tone. As ever, this is a recommendation based format, so whatever song you'd like me to cover, please put it down in the comment section down below. While you're down there, please consider liking this video, subscribing to the channel, all that good stuff. Thank you very much in advance. And now that's out of the way, let's jump into today's song, which is Cliffs of Dover by Eric Johnson. Alright, so along with Money For Nothing, this song might be the most requested ever on the channel. Uh, at least one comment per video has been asking for it, so here I am trying to sound like the guy who literally redefined electric guitar playing forever. This is such an iconic song, such an iconic solo, such an iconic everything, and I just have no idea how I'm gonna go about this, but let's give that a go and start with the guitar, which comes again with no surprise, and I'm gonna play my Fender Stratocaster. Eric Johnson famously plays a 57, I mean a lot of strats, but a 57 strat, and so I think that mine is gonna do the trick just fine. It is uh, worth mentioning that Eric Johnson rewired his tone pot on his strat so that it would also affect the bridge pickup because that's going to come into play real soon as we're about to see. But basically, on the bridge position, this is our basic sound. As usual, it doesn't need to be a Stratocaster. Any guitar with the single coil bridge option that has both volume and tone control will do just fine. Uh, if you're looking out for a Strat, there will be a link in the description box down below for everything that I've used today and some more recommendations at different price points. Let's not waste any more time and go on to our amp and pedal setup. Because this is where the fun really is and there's going to be a bunch of pedals uh, put in that mix. As usual, I'm going through the Fender Tweed here, the controls will be on the screen and uh, Eric Johnson is famous for using quite a few effects over a clean amp. So I'm going to go in reverse uh, from my, my signal chain from the guitar and I believe, as far as my, my, my research has led me to conclude that he was using uh, an Echoplex uh, preamp and delay and he was putting a Tube Screamer into that, and then he was putting a first face into the Tube Screamer. So, uh, first Tube Screamer, preamp, delay. So I'm gonna try to emulate that with my board and pedals that are still available today, and I'm gonna use the Strymon Flint for reverb. I'm gonna use the Dispatch Master by Earthquake Devices for my delay. I'm going to use the left side of the JHS double barrel as my preamp. I'm going to be using the right side of the JHS double barrel as my tube screamer. And into all of that, I'm going to put the Keely Electronics first bender as my first gain stage, taking us there. <laughs> Now, I think 
this is about as close as I'm going to get to that tone. There's so much going on in that signal chain and none of these pedals are actually the ones that he uses because some of them went completely out of production, some of them are really expensive. The whole thing was recorded completely differently. Uh, there's probably some tape in there, some sort of actual room reverb. There's so much happening that it's hard to reproduce the exact same thing. But I think if there was like a recipe of the kind of pedal you would need, that works pretty well. Now I'm fairly sure that he does use the bridge pickup on that famous intro. Depending on the kind of fuzz that you're using, a lot of low end, not a lot of low end, the neck pickup might work as well. But for me to retain the clarity while still being creamy, I'm going on the bridge pickup as mentioned earlier, and I'm just rolling the tone slightly back. So from 10 to eight, seven or eight. That kind of tames the, the fuzz is really harsh high end and still maintains the whole thing sounding creamy and articulate and Johnson-y. And finally, I don't think there are any pedals coming in and out of that sound in between the different parts of the song. Uh, I believe they're always on and uh, the slight variations that you'll have in between the different parts is coming from the guitar control. As I mentioned, the tone rolled back ever so slightly and the volume part going maybe down to eight or seven as well um, during the, the verse part of the song. And with all of that in mind, let's go to the impossible third part of that video, that is how to play the song. Now, as I said earlier, I'm definitely not going to cover the entire solo because first it would take hours and second, I'm definitely sure I'm playing it wrong. There's a, a really good video by Rick Graham that's already a few years old, but that's definitely the best rendition of that song available on YouTube. So I'd suggest going onto that one and uh, slowing it down at 0.25 speed and try and comprehend what's happening. But we'll go over the verse part together and we'll start with the fretting hand. <laughs> Even without mentioning the solo, this is pretty complicated. It's a stretch from the third to the seventh fret while having your uh, middle finger on the fifth fret of the D string. Now, I have seen different ways of playing it, uh, namely either this way or people using the G string without fretting it, uh, which is essentially the same note, but in my opinion, it makes the muting of this one harder and it's, it's also harder to let the other two string resonate if you try to mute that one. So yeah, again, if you're not uh, comfortable doing that kind of stretch from the start, it's perfectly natural, it's going to take some time, it's going to take some getting used to, so you definitely want to practice this um, before you can do it comfortably over an extended period of time. But with that said, let's go and have a look at our picking hand. Now, this song involves either finger picking or at least uh, chicken picking, because the motion on the verse remains the same and it looks like this. <laughs> So essentially just down picking that D string and then using your second and ring finger on the B and E string. That allows you to keep your palm on the strings and then keep that G note muted uh, while still leaving the other two resonate. Again, I can't say for sure that that's the way Eric Johnson plays it because in most of the live uh, clips that I've seen, the focus is not really on that hand, <laughs> it's rather on this one. But that's at least the closest, in my opinion, uh, to sounding like him. As usual, the tabs will be available in the description box down below. I'll make sure to include the tabs to the intro solo as well and that should keep you busy for a while. But with that said, that's it. You have all the tools you need to hit the tone on Cliffs of Dover by Eric Johnson. Now, the usual reminder, this is a recommendation-based format, so whatever song you want me to cover next, put it down in the comment section and I'll get to you as soon as possible. While you're down there, thank you for liking this video, subscribing to the channel and all that good stuff. I wish you all a fantastic week and I will see you next Monday in a new episode of Hit the Tone.